<laughs> we all know music can change our moods, but there's new evidence that it also can cure what ails you, too. Let's get more about that from Dr. Daniel Levitin of McGill University in Canada. He's a neuroscientist and the author of This Is Your Brain on Music. Good morning. Good morning, Anthony. What, just how powerful is music when it comes to your health? Well, we've seen that music can increase immune system function. And one of the things about music is that it activates every region of the brain, the left and right hemispheres, mm -hmm. the front and the back, the cortex, which is, which is the sheath on the outside, as well as the interior of the limbic system. And we've seen the power of music in cases such as Gabriella Giffords, whose uh, recovery was facilitated by melodic intonation therapy, a form of, of music to help her to speak again. Let's talk classical music, because there are people who will say, classic music, listen, you'll become smarter. Is that true? Well, it's, it's not exactly true. This, this was based on an old study that's been debunked many, many times. Classical music can make you feel better, and all music has some power, but the thing that is debunked is it's not just classical music or just Mozart that can show these benefits. If you play it for babies, will, it de will they develop faster? Because that's another theory that's out there. Well, no, that is true. So it turns out that the fetus has a fully functional auditory system by the age of 20 weeks. Wow. Inside the womb, the infant is hearing the sounds of its environment. And then after birth, infants show a preference for the music they heard in the womb. Mm -hmm. The best thing to do is to play your developing baby all the musics of the world so that their brain can become wired to the sounds of the different cultures. So a little Nine Inch Nails, some 50 Cent, and they're, <laughs> they're good to go. And some Pakistani music <laughs> and Chinese opera. And... Speaking of those types of music, though, rock, rap, really heavy rock and roll, what will that do for somebody's brain? Well, it's not so much that the genres have particular effects. It's that if you like the music, it's going to have the effects that we see in immune system function, increasing natural killer cells. In our own lab, we've seen that cortisol levels can be reduced, that's the stress hormone. But it has to be music you like, right? So it's not that heavy metal is gonna have one effect and jazz is gonna have another, but music that you like or that you resonate to is the music that So that's doing. like President Obama listens to jazz before speeches to relax him, so that, that works for him. Yeah, and the mechanism of that is interesting. We have neurons in our brain that fire in time to the beat of the music. Uh -huh. So if the music is slightly slower than uh, average, it'll calm yeah. you down. And if the music is rapid, just ahead of, say, the um, pace that you would be running at, it can help you to increase your running times. Athletes use music to help give them that boost. It seems retailers use music to boost sales, too. There's a whole literature on this. There's a subfield of retail and music. And it turns out around Christmas time, of course, uh, we hear music. And that can make people initially want to buy more, right? right? Because it reminds them of Christmas's past with their families. Nostalgia. Right. That's right. But, you know, it reaches a point of diminishing returns after a couple of weeks of... You're of, sick of those songs. And all you can <laughs> think about... stop. Right, exactly. You're not thinking about, you know, fun Christmas has passed. You're thinking about that horrible time in the mall last week. <laughs> all right, Dr. Daniel Levitin, thanks so much for being with us this morning.